Kyle Larson started off the Indy 500 open test by going very fast, and IndyCar's getting a new team in 2025. It's not often that we talk positively about Roger Penske, Penske Entertainment, and the IndyCar series these days, but when they do something positive, we need to tip our hat to them and acknowledge that they're doing something good. So this past week during the eclipse, Indianapolis Motor Speedway hosted 50,000 people, 50,000 plus according to them. And during that, they did demo runs of an Indy car. Ed Carpenter went out as well as Connor Daly went out in the NASCAR Cindy car. Demo runs for people that likely have never seen a car go around a racetrack before. And we saw multiple people on social post comments and, you know, overheard conversations and things like that of being like of families or people there being like, oh, maybe we should buy tickets for this and being interested in what was happening on track. It's a great way to promote your sport and pretty low hanging fruit. So first off, hats off to them for just hosting people, but also doing these demo runs as well. While you had that many people in the speedway, the best way to attract people to motorsports is to show them the product in person because it's much more thrilling to see it in person than it is to watch it on television. So hats off to them for doing that. So that was on Monday. Well, flash forward to Wednesday, skip over Tuesday there because nothing was happening at the Speedway. Indianapolis hosted the first open test of the season at the Speedway for drivers that were going are going to compete in the Indianapolis 500 to come get their first real run of the Speedway in the 2024 season before the series comes back in May for actual Indy 500 practice. Kyle Larson already did his ROP, his rookie orientation program, so he's free to go off to become a veteran. He's an IndyCar veteran now. He did his ROP last year, so he got to run with the veteran veterans in the morning session afternoon session has been affected by rain so right now it looks like his speed will be the second fastest speed of the day behind joseph newgarden kyle larson's speed of 226.384 mile per hour put him ahead of well everybody else in the field not named joseph newgarden that's a massive accomplishment for him it was a tow speed of course everybody basically in the top five six was all you know all had a tow speed uh, to help get them there but the fact that kyle larson already figured that out is great Multiple times during his run, he also put himself behind other drivers to get a feel for what the car feels like in dirty air. You get a massive wash in any cars, which creates a bunch of understeer. So he's constantly finding a tight condition for all the NASCAR fans out there. And he got out and mentioned that. And Larson, if you've followed Kyle Larson through his career or just watched NASCAR stuff, you know that when he gives an interview, when he's feeling like comfortable or talkative, he kind of overshares at times. And he basically was like, yeah, when I got in the car, I was like, man, everything's moving really fast right now. And he's like, maybe it's just too early for my brain to you know, comprehend that right now. And then he's like, it's wild. But once you get used to it, everything starts to slow down and you realize all the other cars are going the same speed as you. And he's like, that's when you start to be able to visualize and, and sort of recognize everything that's happening. So it was actually really good insight from him. But for Kyle Larson to come out and be second fastest, be that comfortable in the car already, Obviously, he's going to be put into a lot more precarious situations when they come back for Indy 500 uh, practice in May. But for now, it's a good promising start. He's obviously already driven this car at Indianapolis last year in the fall for the open test. He's also done it at Texas as well as Phoenix. So he's got a pretty good feel of this car, and he's at least familiar with the cockpit, with sort of how this car is going to feel. He's done a ton of sim time as well. Getting out on the track at the speedway and getting a feel for the dirty air and everything like that is a that's got to be massively comforting to at least have your first taste and kind of get that out of the way. So Kyle Larson's really fast. We'll see if that, you know, hangs around. Obviously, it's an open test. Obviously, it doesn't really mean that much. Joseph Newgarden's been the fastest here basically the last four years, and one time he's won it. So I wouldn't read too much into it, but it's good to see that he's posting quick lap times like this. Aaron McLaren cars were very fast last year. Uh, obviously, his car's fast this year, looking down the leaderboard right here. Pato is the next fastest um, McLaren car. In 12th, he ran a 222.447, likely no tow. Uh, with that one I don't have the no toe speeds pulled up in front of me right now but for Larson that's great news I am interested to see if he does really well in the Indy 500 and say he wins it do the NASCAR guys does does the NASCAR group as a whole go around and parading him and celebrating his win at the Indy 500 or do they treat it like they treated Shane Van Gisbergen and coming over and winning and being like you know it's really unfortunate this guy came in and kicked our butts we're just not happy about it if Larson wins, they're not going to act like that. So I'm really interested to see sort of how that plays out over the next month when we get to May at Indianapolis. But for now, it's good news for Kyle Larson. He's going to bring a ton of new eyes or additional eyes 
you know, even to the Indianapolis 500. Uh, so I think we're all excited about that. Um, but the uh, Ganassi cars still look very quick. So we'll have to wait and see if they get on track later on on Wednesday. Probably not with the rain or even on Thursday at this point. And other IndyCar news, more positive IndyCar news. They're getting a new team for 2025. Prima, which fields basically cars in every feeder series in Europe right now. Formula 3, Formula 2, WEC, and now IndyCar will be joining the grid in 2025 with a two-car effort with Chevy Power um, in them. Who will be the drivers? Remains to be seen. Sounds like they want to have one veteran paired up with one rookie. And honestly, they have a ton of drivers that they've worked with in the past. Drivers like Charles Leclerc, Nick DeVries, Mick Schumacher, Robert Schwartzman, Oscar Piastri, uh, Jahan Daruvula, Dennis Hager, uh, Frederick Vesti, <laughs> Ollie Behrman, who uh, filled in for Carlos Sainz at uh, Saudi, finished eighth, got points on debut, and uh, Mercedes prodigy, Andrea Kimi Antonelli, or Kimi Antonelli. So they have a lot of big time names here. And if you're not aware of who Prima is, if you're not familiar with their um, with their skill, with what they do, they they win. They just kind of win in everything. They've won the Italian Formula Three. Actually, here let's go through the uh, team championships real quick. Euro Cup Formula Renault champions, Italian Formula Renault championship, Formula Abarth champion, Formula Three Euro Series, Formula Renault 2.0 Alps, Formula or FIA Formula Three European Championship, Italian F4 Championship. ADAC Formula 4 champion, GP2 Series champion, Formula Regional European champions, Formula 3 champions in 2019, 2020, 2022, and 2023, FIA Formula 2 champions in 2020 and 2021, F3 Asian champions, Formula 1 Academy champions last year, and Euro 4 champions last year as well. These guys do nothing but win. If you're familiar with the IndyCar Series, they won... <laughs> They won the Italian Formula Renault Championship in 2001 with Ryan Briscoe. Everybody's familiar with that name. Uh, Formula One fans, Kamui Kobayashi, they won the same championship in 2005 with him. Formula Three Euro Series with Ryan Briscoe in 2003. They do nothing but win. That's what these guys do. They're coming over to the States, and they will likely be competitive here as well. This is a major win for IndyCar. It's like... I know there's going to be people that draw the comparison of like Carlin coming over and joining IndyCar because Carlin had the super successful track record in the feeder series in Europe and basically just across Europe of being this team that, you know, every other team, every Formula One team, everybody that was in like a driver academy, their drivers kind of went through the Carlin system at some point or another, it felt like. And Trevor Carlin and his wife, they did a ton for driver development and for teams around the world. And when they came to IndyCar, everybody was like, well, they've done nothing but win everywhere else, so they're going to do the same thing here. And unfortunately, Carlin just couldn't replicate the system that they had in Europe. They couldn't replicate it here. And there was a number of factors, which we're not going to get into right now. But for Prema, if they can come over and replicate what they've been doing, they're going to be a successful team. And this is good for IndyCar. This isn't like just some random guy showing up and being like, oh, I want to start an IndyCar team right now and then fizzling out after a couple of years. I'm not going to throw any names out there because that's just not fair. That's not nice. And we're trying to be nicer right now. So for them to show up, they have the infrastructure. They know what it takes to win championships. They have great relationships with tons of drivers, right? So, I mean, just in the last few years, they've had Esteban Ocon in the car, Felix Rosenquist, obviously current um, Meyer Schenk driver, Lance Stroll, current Formula One driver, Mick Schumacher, current well, unemployed. Well, he is, he is driving WEC for for Alpine, so good for him. Hopefully, he doesn't total the car too many times. Uh, Marcus Armstrong, current IndyCar driver. Enzo Fittipaldi, obviously. Kimi Antonelli, Pierre Gasly in GP2 when they ran him. Charles Leclerc, Oscar Piastri. They, like I said, they do nothing but field really competitive drivers. And they have this long Rolodex that they can flip through. Uh, for everybody that's young a rolodex is like a it was like a container that you would set on your desk that had like note cards in it and then it had like a little tab for each you know letter of the alphabet and you could flip through there and find somebody's contact information before you could just put it up pull it up on your phone here and find it that way regardless they have a long list of drivers that they can call upon and maybe they do call upon somebody like a calum eilat to come join them next year as you know the veteran to pair with a rookie whoever that rookie might be 
or Alexander Rossi. They could potentially pull him over because he's in a contract year with um, with McLaren. Would he want to go join a first-year team? Probably not, but I'm just throwing names out there right now. Either way, it's great to see them come and join the series. So good for IndyCar. They're attracting new teams. I believe that that is 29 full-time entries next year uh, for IndyCar. Could make bump day at the 2025 Indianapolis 500. Pretty interesting. So let me know what you think about uh, Kyle Larson posting a really quick lap time. Prima joining. Like and subscribe to the pod or to the channel, not the podcast. You can do that as well if you want to. But like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.